YouTube, what is going on? Back with my latest video. Today we're going to be talking about all things New York City Comic Con. I'm going to give you guys my favorite pops that Funko announced for this con, my least favorites, and also a few pops I think will be future grails from this con. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Get my thoughts. Here we go. Listen, been in the game for a minute. Clocking in because it's time to get down to business. Starting is a habit. Only I'm good at it. Asking around town, I'm known as the pop savage. Alright guys, before we get into this video, please smash that like button down below. Let me know guys if you're enjoying these videos, and as always, if you're new to this channel, welcome, hit the subscribe button down below as well so you're updated on most recent content, and hit that bell notification so you're alerted as soon as I post a new video. So if it's your first time tuning into this, to this segment, what I like to try to do every Saturday is talk about different financial topics that I find interesting, um, whether it be pops that think are going to go up in value, or things of this nature like New York City Comic Con. Every single Comic Con, I like to kind of give you guys my prediction, the things I think are going to be, uh, you know, hits and misses of the con and kind of share my favorites as well. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So we're going to start off on a positive note. I'm going to give you guys my favorite pops from the con. Things I thought Funko did a good job of executing, whether the mold was really cool or pops I just think I have a nostalgia for. And the first pop I want to talk about is Mona Lisa uh, Sappenstein, I think is her name, from Mar uh, Parks and Recreation. Sorry if I mispronounced her name, but uh, she was a funny character in the show. Uh, Funko did a good job executing this character in the mold with her holding her hand out with money. That's kind of what I remember her most from the show. I don't know if I'll give it or not, just because it's just a one-trick pony for me as far as I, I like the pop. Uh, but definitely one I, I liked, I thought it was a good idea, and I'm sure a lot of Parks and Recreation fans are excited to get this pop. Uh, the next one I thought was really cool, uh, but was kind of uh, not as exciting once we got some more news later on the week was the Yosemite Sam. Uh, this was actually the first Yosemite Sam pop that's been announced for Funko, I guess. Uh, it still will be the first one released because there was an NFT one that's going to be coming out. But I believe that's going to be, you know, obviously in people's hands after New York City Comic Con. So this is actually the first Yosemite Sam. Um, I, it's from an iconic episode. I definitely remember watching this episode growing up. But definitely the one I like more is going to be the, you know, original in his regular uh, cowboy hat and whatever Yosemite Sam, the NFT one. So I still think that one's cool, but I'm probably going to go hold off and get the NFT one. Although, you know, neither one's really... Uh, you know, both of them having your collection is pretty cool. Next one I thought was pretty cool was the Borat. Um, it's, it's surprising that it's taking this long to have a Borat pop. Um, again, a pop, I don't know if I'm going to get this one per se. Um, you know, if it stumbles across <laughs> in my cart, then, you know, so be it. Um, but Borat, you know, i definitely seen both movies. Thought they were really funny. Uh, really cool pop. I think this one's going to be pretty popular as well. Thought it was a good design and good character to finally do for a con. Also, like the Simpsons pops, uh, Jimbo, I think his name's... Kearney? Curly? I forget. Don't don't uh, drag me for that. But the two bullies from Simpsons, I, I thought those were really, really cool. I, I will be picking those up to continue my Simpsons collection up there. Um, really cool. They came out really well in pop forms, which all the Simpsons characters seem to do. Um, that's why I like the animation stuff. They tend to translate better the pop form. I think those were really, really dope, and uh, I definitely will be grabbing both of those. I forget. They're two different stores. Um, you guys have probably seen the share ret retailer list. It's going to be probably the thumbnail of this picture. Um, and then the last pop I thought was really cool in my favorite pop from the con was Steve from Blue's Clues. Um, I grew up watching that show, you know, I was, in, I was a kid when the show came out, so that's very nostalgic for me. For whatever reason, I don't have Blue, I need to track her down. Uh, yeah, Blue's a girl, right? I think Blue's a girl. Correct me if I'm wrong. But Steve from Blue's Clues is somebody I grew up with. He's got the handy dandy notebook in his hands. Uh, definitely a pop I'm going to be picking up. Uh, I would love to see them do more from this line. Other pops from Nick Jr., like uh, Franklin, Little Bear, uh, Allegra's Window. There's a whole lot of 90 Binya Binya from Gullah's Gullah Island. A lot of 90s uh, Nick Jr. shows I would love to see them do, uh, but it's really cool to see the Steve pop. Uh, definitely, probably the pop I want most out of this, and probably the only must have for me out of this whole uh, con. Um, there were some cool things. Definitely, the, the con in general touched a lot of different uh, fandoms. I, I think they did it overall good job. This was better than San Diego Comic-Con than me. Um, I would think, there, I definitely have more things I want or would be interested in from this con than I was for San Diego Comic-Con, which I only got, I think, one thing. Um, so this one's, this con, although lackluster compared to other cons in the past, I think it's been the best con this year so far. So definitely things that uh, were really good, but let's actually talk about the things that I thought were really bad. So the first thing that I think Funko needs to stop doing for this con, obviously I understand why they do it, but I'm just tired of seeing the mascot con exclusive. So we have, for this one, the, the rat, the pigeon, and then the Statue of Liberty. I mean, 
At this point, I've seen every single color I need to see with the pigeon and the rat uh, from New York. I think this is a concept we can, uh, you know, dead for this con and kind of make something else new and interesting. Uh, I know, obviously, you want to have like a souvenir type thing for the convention, but I think there's other things that, you know, embody New York than just a pigeon and, and a rat, you know, at this point. And same with Statue of Liberty. There's other things you probably can do to make it feel like a New York feel. Um, obviously, there are other, you know, characters or um you know people that people associate with new york that you can do and that can take the place of these these mascots they continuously do um, i know why they do it don't get me wrong but i just think it's boring at this point and it's time to move on and you know and retire them for this con and keeping with that same the other thing i didn't like from this con is the repeat of characters like i said people that are from new york we got another biggie pop you know i'm tired of seeing biggie pops i'm a huge biggie fan and that tupac biggie debate i am firmly on the Biggie side. Biggie's one of my favorite artists of all time, but we've had way, 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 way too many Biggie stuff. Um, you know, this this pop is okay. There's nothing really special about this that was necessary. There are some Biggie, um, you know, things from videos, you know, um, the One More Chance video and things like that, um, hypnotized video that we've gotten, but we don't need every single video of Biggie. Um, you know, this one, I'm just, Think we've retired Biggie Pops for a while because um, they're becoming less and less special. Um, the other characters like Goku, you guys know I'm a huge Dragon Ball Z fan. I have the Dragon Balls tatted on me in Shenron. I I'm tired of seeing Goku and this con we got two of them. Um, you know, I just rather see some other characters. We got the second form Cell, which is, you know, the completing of that line. Um, but there's so many other characters from Dragon Ball Z that can be made into characters at this point. For us to get two Gokus just seems lazy. Um, and just uninteresting to be honest with you and same with like Harry Potter We get a Harry Potter every single comic-con uh, the Neville one's pretty cool But Harry I think he has the basilisk thing in there. Um, it just feels like a pop we've already gotten I know we haven't but it just feels like that's something uh, That we gotten in the past because we just don't need every single hair thing Harry Potter ever did in the Funko Pop form But you know people like them, but I just think at some point it gets boring um, it's not that they're not they're bad looking pops. It's just boring and uninteresting at least to me uh, again These are all my opinions. I know that people are gonna like these these pops and I'm not telling anybody not to get anything It's just my opinion. I don't I think they're boring and the last but not least uh, The pops I think are the worst and I'm sure people disagree is the Polaroid, Polaroid camera in the Rubik's Cube um, I think they're incredibly um, Unneeded I just think they're they're stupid looking. I mean, that's just my honest opinion. Um, I know a lot of people were talking about the Rubik's Cube had a chase where it was actually finished. That may have been at least a little bit more cool, um, but to have these pops as con exclusives just feels really, really weird. I mean, I feel like an old timer in this Funko collecting community at this point where I'm saying it didn't used to be that way. Things used to feel like the like con exclusives. And these just don't feel like con exclusives to me. I mean, if they were commons, I still would have an issue with them. But for them to be a con exclusive just seems like a, a wasted opportunity where something else could have taken the place of them. So those are my opinions on what I thought were my favorite pops and then also my least favorite pops from this convention. But let me share now with you guys the pops I think are going to be future grails from this convention. Before we get in that, if you're interested in getting a $15 off coupon for whatnot, there is a link in the description box below. I don't know how long to be doing this. Normally it's $10, but it's up to $15 now. So if you want to get any pops into your collection via whatnot or any other collectible, there's a link in the description box below. Help support this channel, helps you get some money off to further your collection. So let's get right into the pops I think are going to be future grails. Uh, the first pop I think is going to be a future grail. It's not a line I collect, um, but it's one I probably will pick up because it's a, one of the animes that's next up on my list to watch, and that is the One Piece uh, pop. It's really, really cool. Um, I can't tell you much about it, where it comes from, but that fandom for One Piece is uh, you know, definitely committed and loves uh, that anime, that show, and there is kind of like a drought for getting stuff for One Piece for a while. So I think people are going to gravitate towards this one. It's going to sell out pretty quickly. Even though it's going to have a higher price tag, it may sell out uh, quicker than other ones that are, you know, probably going to be like a $30, $40 pop. I think it's going to sell out faster than most $30, $40 pops. And I just think once people have this one in their collection, it's going to be staying there. The fandom from One Piece, like I said before, is pretty vast and they're really into it. So I think this pop's going to be one that's going to be hard to get and also is going to appreciate in value over time. Next one, I think, is kind of uh, going to be under the radar. It's uh, kind of going against the rules I said before as far as characters. I'm tired of seeing, but I still think the next two I'm going to mention are going to be good pops to pick up in your collection because the fandom is just so massive. 
um, for these characters that I think is going to sell out and uh, be popular no matter what. And that's first one is Groot. Um, Baby Groot just has a crazy fandom behind him. It's something you never would have saw before if you were a comic book fan, but but Groot is just really a hugely popular character, and uh, I don't think this pop's going to be any different. You have that Groot that came out a while ago the, with the mixtape, which hadn't been like the first Groot or anything, and that pop is pretty expensive now. I think this pop's going to be the same. It's not going to be like a $200 pop or anything, but definitely one I can see going for over retail this time next year. Definitely one if you are a fan of that. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy or Groot, you may want to get that one in the collection. Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is probably going to come out before the next New York City Comic Con, so this pop's probably going to get popular again. Um, so definitely one I can see being more expensive this time next year that we're talking about it. And then the other character I said that we've repeated in the past, but I still think it's going to be pretty popular, is Anakin. Um, you know, this pop is, is pretty cool, you know, I'm, I like Star Wars, I don't really collect the lines at all. Um, but this pop's pretty cool. Star Wars just announced a whole bunch of new shows. I think Anakin's going to be in some of them, if I remember correctly. Definitely a, a character that's going to remain popular. Um, Star Wars pops tend to sell out pretty quickly for cons, and you know they tend to go up in value. So definitely a pop I think is going to be harder to get, and one that's going to start getting up there in value pretty quickly. So definitely something you want to get into your collection. Those two pops, the Groot and the Anakin, are a little bit different than the Biggie, Harry Potter, um, the Goku. They don't tend to go up too much. Goku may, but there's two of them this time, so I don't know if it's going to be the same case. Um, and the last pop I think is going to be expensive. Um, although I didn't watch it, I know how popular this show was. Um, I was a little bit too old for it, but it's the Ben 10 pop. I don't even know the name of the character. Drop down in the comment section below if you guys know offhand. But um, I think this might be the most expensive pop from this con. Um, it's the first time we got in the Ben 10 pop. I think there's been uh, sodas in the past, but we I don't believe we've ever got a Ben 10 pop. Um, I think this is going to be the start of that line. So people who are trying to collect that line, this is going to be the first one to get in their collection. I think it's going to be huge fandom for it. Um, people who are younger than me, who are in the Funko collecting hobby, um, are going to want this pop. So, And I don't think they're going to let it go from their collection once they have it. So. I think this is the sleeper one of all the pops from the convention. Um, maybe it's not even the sleeper, but this pop I think is going to be very, very expensive eventually because um, it's going to be the first one. It's going to be a con exclusive and it's going to be a, a pop that people are going to start their collection with and are going to need in their collection as far as being completionist. So definitely a pop uh, I think sh you should stay on your radar and I think you should try to pick it up as quickly as possible on release day. So. Uh, like I said, those are the pops I think are going to be future grails, the pops I like and dislike. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys thought about this con overall. Honestly, if I had to give it a grade out of 1 to 10, I'd give it about a 6 and a half, 7, which is, you know, fine. It's better than most cons have been recently. Um, you know, something a little bit for everybody. Um, you know, those other pops I thought were cool, didn't name, um, but no, nothing was really offensive other than the, um, you know, the camera and the Rubik's Cube to me. Everything else was just, you know, either okay or really, really good. So let me know in the comment section below what you guys thought about this con, what you're going to be buying. If you think something's going to be different as far as a grail, let me know in the comment section below. I'm always interested in hearing your opinions. Thanks again for watching, guys. As always, if you like this video, hit the like button, comment, share, subscribe if you're new. Check me out on my Instagram at ThePopSavage. You can stay connected there as well. And also my second channel at Savage Breaks, where I do Pokemon, sport cards, and comic books. Thanks again. Until next time, see you later.